Welcome back to Red Next Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we're going to be working on this 97 ZRT 600 Triple. This thing's been sitting in the shop all freaking summer. I've been meaning to get at it, but just haven't had the time. So the summer's coming to an end. Winter's coming. We're starting to think about uh, working on the sleds and changing the seasons. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get turning some wrenches on her. So, I mean, last winter we had a couple of videos of reviving this, got this off my buddy Kyle. Uh, you know, we did the <laughs> one video, I think it was Sea Solid. We got it up and running and then uh, realized that the fuel tank was just right full of water and so was the bottom end because uh, the bearings are out of this bottom end, you know. <laughs> Much like a celebrity uh, relationship, its days were numbered, you know. It just was not going to make it. Now that I think about it, it's kind of like Johnny Depp Amber Heard relationship, you know. Started off fun, there was a lot of promise in the beginning, but then after a bit of neglect and some abuse, roll over in bed and you're just staring at a turd. And I mean, you know it's over then. But I mean, unlike their relationship, this can still be saved, you know. The bottom end bearings were gone out of this, but the top end was still good. So I went over to the Cat Shack, Peterborough Cycle Salvage, and got a complete replacement. That's got a good crankshaft in it. It's got good bearings. I got a gasket set. So I think today we're going to rip that engine out of there. We'll get it up on the bench. Pretty sure probably just going to use that one because I'm sure the inside of this one looks uh, dirtier than a job site porta potty. All right, open up the hood on this, sweetie. Oh yeah, kind of like that. The hood cable's busted, so just wedge it on the front of the pipe there. I'll have to put something to block that up because those pipes are coming off. So yeah, last time we were ripping, we were uh, spraying some brake clean around the clutch there when it was running, and the idle was going up and down and all that. So we know the crank seal's leaking, and they were growling and howling pretty bad. So we'll yank this sucker right out of there, get her up on the bench beside that one. We'll tear it down, get all the jugs and everything, and then I think... Probably just gonna end up using this whole lower end. I'm gonna split it apart and put new uh, seals and everything in this one anyway But I got a pretty good feeling that the inside of this one's pretty scuzzy looking from all that water and rust and God knows whatever else is in there So we'll uh, make some quick work of this. Yank this sucker out. This should be way easier than pulling out the four strokes So let's get at her <laughs> is exactly why two strokes are pretty awesome that didn't take long at all it was literally like you know 10 minutes or so just to uh peel that out get it on the bench and now that we do have it out you might remember from the like the first video of us resurrecting this thing it was right full of the pine cones and needles and we vacuumed and cleared as much of it out but now that we got the engine out i can get all that stuff out from underneath it so now uh Strip her down. I'm going to pull the uh, clutch off. I think it's got a 12.13 mil or something on there. We'll pull that out, pop the clutch off, strip all the spark plugs off, get the heads off, water uh, all these uh, passages, get the reeds out, everything like that. And we'll start inspecting and then uh, yeah, we'll get this apart and see how it looks.
we got her stripped right down to the bare minimum and uh, yeah it's not as bad as i thought it would be on the inside but it's definitely lots of crud in here you can see the signs of the rust on the water and you know whatever that schmag is there but uh yeah it was definitely getting water and all that in there that's the plate on the end of the engine by the uh, crank nub there and you can see how all the rust and stuff's built up in there and then the back side of that seal that is definitely why when I was spraying the brake clean in there you can hear the difference she is uh completely junk and uh yeah pretty uh dirty looking in there although this bearing here is like the only good one nice and quiet still runs smooth these center ones here oh yeah that one's no good that one's no good they're not flopping around or anything, but uh, definitely making noise is not good. I mean, yeah, you could sit there and put new uh, seals on there and just run her again, but I mean, uh, that'd make about as much sense as going to a family reunion to pick up a good date, so uh, not a good idea. Same with uh, this side here, that one. Yeah, all rock hard and all the crap inside, so i think our wise decision is uh, i'm just going to use that bottom end that was a good that was a running engine from the cat shack you know they saved that for a reason and i mean our top end's all good those cylinders are good the pistons are good rings are good the heads all that stuff so i think i'm just going to uh, clean everything up we're going to stick the jugs and the heads and everything back on there i'll put the stator from this one in there get it all switched over and then uh, i already vacuumed out all the uh rest of the mouse crap and squirrel stuff in there and uh, we'll plop her back in should have this thing running in no time i just got to strip this uh mount block off of there and then we're just going to take this crank in those cases stick them under the bench and move on to uh, that lower end now i do have new crank seals and gaskets and all that so going to replace the seals in this one seeing as how we've got it all out now's the time to do it i don't really want to put it all together and then find out one of those is leaking and unfortunately i gotta split it because the mag side seal has a lip on it that keys into grooves cut into the cases so you can't just pull it out this one on the crank side you can change that without splitting the cases you can pull it out and pop a new one in but I want to change them both, so uh, we'll do that and then button her up and uh, hopefully grip her and rip her. Okie dokie, got the new bottom end flipped upside down on the bench. I've already pulled all the bolts out of it and uh, you don't want to pull the bolts all out at once, you know, going from one side to the other. These things are aluminum and they're machined. You don't want them to warp because, the, you know, the way they're torqued down and all that. So it's pretty handy. They do have the all these bolt holes numbered, you know. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we got a one down in there and then... You know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, so on. So, basically, this being aluminum, just start in the middle, and it's just crisscrossing, going, working your way like a circle all the way out to the outside, stop it from warping, and then uh, before I go ahead and pull that off, this uh, the crank end, obviously this motor's been sitting without a clutch on it for a while. That's all rusted up, so I'm going to take some uh, emery cloth and give that a quick little you know clean that all up get that shiny so when it's all back together the clutch will get on there nice but we'll get this out get the crankshaft out of it we'll check these bearings put the new seals and everything in make sure the inside's nice and clean yeah this one's already looking way cleaner than uh, <laughs> that one down there but uh, we're still gonna pull this right out uh, we'll clean it there's a little bit of signs of rust down in here you know whether it's condensation or whatnot who knows but uh, we'll pull these uh, seals off yeah these seals this one doesn't look too bad not it's not real rock hard or nothing this one on this side though there's some signs of some crap on the inside it's getting a little little hard so good call changing these all right so i've dropped the uh, new to us crank in the block there now I've put a little bit of right stuff in the journals around the seals so when we plop them in there's no leaks or anything around there. It's a bit of a bugger lining this sucker up because you can see it's got tiny little indicator dots. Those are opposite, what do we got? There's the bigger uh, cutouts in these uh, bearing races. There's tabs inside that you gotta have these things all lined up and locked in for that crank to drop all the way down. So it's a bit of a bugger lining them all up but uh 
we got that done and then I just smeared a tiny little bit of right stuff on the other half of that case there these are uh, pretty flat machined uh, surfaces I don't even think you need to really put anything in between them and then we're just gonna plunk it make sure everything's lined up make sure our seal groove is falling in oh this is too much like work time to take a break oh that was a well-deserved beer break and productive i ended up having one per cylinder but it gave me the the energy i needed to button the rest of it back up and then uh, you know gave it the buffalo bill treatment and plopped her back down in the hole so uh, all we gotta do is uh, put the hoses where the hoses go put the spark plug wires on her grip it and rip it give her a tug and hold her to the rug pull the handle let her dangle pull on that and hear it brap get the carbs choking and the pipe smoking Anywho, that's enough of that. Let's just have another beer. I don't know, it might be the beers talking, but uh, this cat's starting to look pretty good, and uh, I think she's winking at me there. Hey, girl. All right, beer break's over, and uh, back to work. I got all the pipes back on it. I got the carburetors on it. Everything's buttoned up. It's got some coolant in there, and I got the clutch on it. No belt on it, though, so when we... Uh, Try and fire this thing up, it doesn't uh, dangle across the shop and take out my tire machine. So, uh, yeah, I think all that's left to do is uh, kick tires like the fires. Let's uh, give her a tug. Okay, so now it's just time to give her a few pulls and see how it goes. I don't know how many pulls it's going to take, but I'm just doing it dry. we we'll put the choke on, you know, till switch up. Just start pulling it and uh, see if we can draw some fuel and get this thing to come to life. There we go. She's tight. Normally I like tight. Tail light's lighting up, that's a good sign. <laughs> you got everything plugged in kind of right. Come on, sucker. Oh. oh. Heard something promising there. September 24th. Nice one. Looks like the weather's shifting. It looks a little foggy. Well, I mean, this thing has been sitting in the shop like all summer. I just haven't had the time to do anything with it. I've had the bottom end. I bought it at the end of last season there in preparation to do this. I just haven't had the time. So September 24th, we're ready to rock. We got the triple up and going, man. She's uh, tight, right? So we just got to pull her outside. I'm going to Run it, burp the cooling system out of her, make sure everything's good, no leaks, all that jazz, and then uh, maybe run her over to McLean skis and uh, pop those skis in the air, do a little grass dragon, make sure everything's okay, and then uh, this winter time, we got a triple. Almost forgot how good this thing sounds, and uh, under the hood, it reminds me of that check from uh, Total Recall. It's got three jugs in there. 
That's been sitting for a little bit. Let's just see if it starts up nice and easy now. Beauty. It's what we like to call a one pull wonder. All right, so it's all back together. It's up and running. It sounds good. It runs good. So, uh, like every other video, gotta test it. You know, we got no snow, but we do have a bit of a strip there. Ian says there's too much grass growing on this roadway, so uh, I think we'll try and get rid of some of that. ZRT's done, ripped her up and down the little roadway here, but uh, gotta say I'm not that impressed. It didn't really get the dangle, the full dangle. Little dangle? <laughs> not full dangle, but I mean, it's back together, it's running good. We'll wait till the uh, snow flies and then uh, we'll let the ZRT really uh, show its colors. But uh, for now, I guess we gotta uh, get it back home. We've got uh, McLeanski's tractor with the forks and uh, JP's got the two by four, so uh, all right, let's take her home. <laughs> well, it took us three videos to get here, but finally, things up and running with not too many issues. You know, we just need snow. That's the only issue we got now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We enjoy doing these videos. And uh, as always, take it easy. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.